Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, Theresa May uh, may have been the longest-serving Home Secretary, but one blot on her record was failing to reduce immigration, arguably one of the reasons people voted for Brexit. It didn't stop her becoming Prime Minister, however, so how now has she got the power to turn that failure on immigration around? Our senior Home Affairs correspondent Simon Israel reports now from one town with a large immigration population, Wisbeach. People in the Fenland capital of Wisbeach know all about Europe's freedom of movement. Migrants have been coming here for years to work in the fields and the food factories. They are estimated to make up 35% of the population. They keep slipping through the cracks, said one non-migrant resident in an unguarded moment. The gate needs to come down. Just a short walk across this market square, in effect, takes you around Europe. You can hear people on their mobile phones talking Latvian, Polish, Lithuanian, Russian, Bulgarian, Romanian and Portuguese. This town is dependent on its migrant communities, but there's an undercurrent of resentment. Farming fields, there's mostly more Eastern Europeans working and they just kick the English out. But I can understand why they do work hard for their money, but English can do exactly the same. I think if there's an equal role for everyone, we all get along perfectly. But it's not equal. No. There aren't many like her prepared to speak publicly. They fear the racist label if they are seen being anti-immigration. But it's dominating conversation here. And what Theresa May can do, having failed as Home Secretary, to deliver the promised cap on immigration. Instead, it's continued to rise. What are you hoping Theresa May is going to deliver? Well, well first of all, I'd like to close the borders to all the illegals and the, you know, coming over and, and just staying everywhere. That, that's spoiling the British way of life. With this uh, exit, that's not going to change. We're still going to have people coming in with the trade deals. We're going to have people coming in from the Commonwealth if we don't have enough workers coming from Europe. So nothing's going to change. But some things have already changed. Hate crimes soared. And still no published action plan from Theresa May's now former department. This Lithuanian translator says she was racially abused and told to go home as she queued in her local post office last week. When this actually happens to you and, and a person telling you to go home, when my home is here, when I build, you know, I'm planning to build, extend my house, have a family, when you, after what happened, you start questioning, do I really want this? There's an expectation, if not a faith in Wisbeach, that the scale of immigration is going to change. But whether Theresa May can deliver is another matter. After all, six years as Home Secretary, seven immigration bills and 45,000 changes to immigration rules has still not delivered what the government had pledged to do. Simon Israel in Wisbeach. Well, also at the top of Theresa May's to-do list is making sure that the United Kingdom doesn't actually break up. Earlier I spoke with Nicola Sturgeon, the First Minister of Scotland, and I asked her whether she thought she could build a constructive relationship with Theresa May. I hope so. I don't know Theresa May well. Uh, we've met. Um, but again, similarly to the position with David Cameron, we have pretty big political disagreements, but each of us has a responsibility to work in the interests of the people we serve. And I think that means uh, for both of us that we should respect each other's positions uh, and try to work together where we can. What do you think has now happened in British politics? We have a situation in which virtually everyone's fallen on their sword mm. and women are now running everywhere from Scotland to Northern Ireland. No, perhaps that's the only positive thing Britain. out of it all. <laughs> well is that because the men have quite um, simply messed it up? Well the men have messed up quite a lot. I think that's fair to say. Like, I don't want to oversimplify the, the gender aspect of this. Theresa May and I disagree on a lot but I think it's great that there are more women not just in different parts of the UK but 
across the world and you know hopefully the, the list will grow longer in but the months that to come. I think it's, that's good. Um, I think it, I think it's overdue. So I think we're now beginning to see, although there's a long way still to go, that glass ceiling uh, shatter. So you know, I think it's overdue. I think women are now emerging into positions of leadership. That should have been the case many, many years yeah. ago. It's coming at the same time as there are many situations in the UK and across Europe and the world where it's easy to look and say the men haven't done a great job of it. Let's look particularly at Brexit. What kind of a deal could she do that would in some way be acceptable to you? Well, that's not really the, 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 the perspective I'm coming at this from. I, I come from the very basic point of principle that Scotland, the, the country I'm elected to lead as First Minister, voted not to leave the EU but to stay in the EU. So my duty as First Minister is to seek to find a way of giving effect to how Scotland voted. So I will, when I first speak to the new Prime Minister, will want to establish a central role for Scotland in the process that now takes shape. But not... You want a minister in the team? Well, I, I want to be centrally involved in this team. Yourself? But, uh, well, I, of course I'll be closely involved in it on behalf of the Scottish Government. But the, the key point I want to go on to make here is its involvement for what purpose? Um, I don't accept the inevitability of Scotland exiting the EU. I, I, if I did that in light of how Scotland voted, I would be fit to be First Minister of Scotland. You're here in England where there's been terrible abuse, terrible hatred, terrible schisms and splits, and there's very unpleasant things happening between people. Mm -hmm. How do you view it? Um, well, I think all of us have a duty to try to, not, notwithstanding our different positions and different opinions, to, to bring people together. Some of what we've witnessed in terms of uh, racial attacks and uh, intolerance of that, you know, whatever your politics, whatever your view, we have to absolutely stand strong against that. One of the early things I would really hope Theresa May does is give a guarantee for EU nationals living in this country that their status uh, is secure and that there's no question of them losing the right to live here. That would send a very strong and very positive message and I hope she decides to do it. Nicola Sturgeon, thank you very much for talking with us.